Let's hop over to Group D, Gothenburg, Sweden, where a slightly off-kilter Chelsea side were looking to bounce back from a frustrating nil-nil draw at Stamford Bridge one week prior. What'd you see? Chelsea hacking. I think my main thing here is that in the end, Chelsea deserved to win this match. But I'll just say it. BK Hacken could have won this match. <laughs> like, I think if a few bounces go a different direction, or if I think the crossbar is not somehow magnetized to the ball in this match, <laughs> I think we could be looking at a totally different football game. We could be looking at a totally different uh, situation as far as the table looks in the group. Hmm. It was a great game. A 3-1 scoreline, I don't think entirely representative of how close it was. So let's talk about it a little bit. It was a battle of Swedish goalkeepers. I like that the announcer mentioned that a couple times. Obviously, you have Jennifer Falk on uh, the side of BK Hacken and the antagonist of many U.S. women's national team fans' nightmares, Zashira Musevich, tending goal for Chelsea. I thought Hacken did a really great job running a ferocious counterattack, but similar to Ajax, they maintained a great defensive shell at the same time. I like their game plan. I think we knew it. I mean, anybody who's watched even these few games of the tournament or has looked back at Hacken games in the past, the atmosphere from the crowd was great. Hell yeah. The look of that arena, like the way the fans are super into it, like you could you could hear it through the broadcast, which credit to DAZN, it doesn't sound like... You know, I mean, some of these productions, as we talk about the growth of the game, some of these productions, like you can see like, okay, they don't have as many mics. They don't have as many cameras. It was coming through in this match that the crowd was yeah. out of their mind. And I just love the heart and guile from the squad. I'm not a huge, huge believer in like, oh, the crowd gave them energy. But there's certainly that exists in sports. And I think some of that was happening in this match, particularly. Hacken tried to set the tone right away. You have Kafaji to Larisi down the right flank. To Anne Vigard, who glances a shot. Where? Off the crossbar. This is four minutes into the match. I did not realize it was going to be an omen to how things were going to go. I made a note as I'm watching the game live in the ninth minute. Aaron Cuthbert fights for the ball between three Hacken midfielders and then is able to clear it out, win the ball, give it over to Ashley Lawrence, and then kind of... Uh, continue the possession. We talked about our last show too. Cuthbert has just been like kind of rising as these games have been happening. Like her, yeah. she's just been like increasing her impact every match. And we're going to talk about her a little more as we talk about the rest of this game. Lauren James, you already know what time it is. I mean, in the 10th minute, right after Cuthbert's able to win that ball in the 10th minute, LJ, she makes her first noise of the match. She hits a curling shot from outside the 18. It curls right into Falk, who still has to make a good play and tip it over the bar. I mean, the ball is going to where Falk is, but it's so perfectly placed right under the crossbar. She has to tip it over. LJ is just able to hit any shot from wherever she is in whatever position. And I'm, I'm going to go back to Ajax real quick and just thinking about another Dutch footballer. Because when I'm watching Lauren James play, the great Dutch player, Arjen Robin, played for great Chelsea, ball. had a great run for Bayern Munich. Everybody used to say on the broadcast, every World Cup, when Netherlands was in it, I think uh, Robin was on that uh, that team that made it to the final. Mm -hmm. Everybody always used to say, just make Robin go right. Just get him onto his right foot. All he does is hit with his left foot. And you know what, motherfucker? Everybody else has thought about that. You just can't get him <laughs> to his right. He's going to get to his left. And Lauren James is the exact same way where it's like, even if you force James to her right, she'll still get it onto her left and rip a shot. And it's just like, I don't even know what you do with her as a defender. That curling shot that she hit at Fuck was like, it was interesting because the keeper kind of freezes also. She's like, I know it's curling towards me, but <laughs> is it going to curl back the other? Like she <laughs> just kind of was like, wait, what's going on? And yeah, shout out to Aaron Cuthbert. I had some notes real quick. I had some notes. Yeah. I can't remember if it was the hacking match or the prior match where she kind of took like an ill-advised shot. And I was just like, eh, I don't know about that. You know, like. <laughs> it, it looked sort of panicked. I think it might have been the hack and match. And it was like right after halftime. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, all right, all right, settle down, Aaron. Like, you don't have to panic. You know, and I think mm -hmm. it was the hack and match. Yeah. And and now I understand it a lot better now that we've we've gotten like a lot more context. And, and that's just her game. She's just like, nope, I'm swinging. Like, we're out here and it's cold <laughs> and I don't want this mm -hmm. to go into any deeper waters than it needs to. And I'm going to do whatever I have to do to kind of put the team on my back in this moment. I don't know if I'm doing something because she's a Scottish player. And I feel like you will understand me as a guy who cares about sports way more than we should. I have a feeling that Aaron Cuthbert has a really hard forehead. 
You know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to explain why I think that, but if you if you catch one of those, you're in for a bad time. She definitely has. A, I'm gonna crush a beer can on my forehead. Kind of look Hell about her. Yeah. Hell yeah! <laughs> Crushing a beer can against her forehead is the perfect metaphor for how she's out there playing football. It's just incredible. One thing I noticed during the match uh, that I really enjoy, I caught it in the 12th minute. The Hacken fans, I don't know what chant they're doing, but it's to the tune of the song "The Lion Sleeps Tonight." I'm gonna have oh, to yeah. do some extra. I'm gonna have to do some extra googling, figure out what the words are, what they translate to. But after that 12th minute, when I noticed they're, they're doing that chant, Joanna Reeting Kanarud, who I've been butchering her name throughout this, Kanarud, shout out to Taya, listener of the podcast. I believe they're in Sweden, hooked us up with a bunch of pronunciations for the names of many of the Swedish players, other Scandinavian players in the tournament. Just awesome. Taya, you are a superstar. We very much appreciate uh, the contribution. Cheers. I mean, Kanarud, she is... Absolutely one of the best midfielders in the tournament so far. I mean, I realize I'm focused on a lot of the Chelsea matches, but she has a run down the right side. She completely dispatches Elma Yuntala Nelhag and serves a pass in to Sam Kerr. And Sam Kerr, on the run, is able to like sand wedge it and like pop it straight up into the top netting for the first goal. There's nothing really Falk could have done about it. 14 minutes in, Chelsea's up 1-0. But I still, it felt even at that point. I, where was your head at? Chelsea gets that first goal 15 minutes in. What were you thinking at that point? I think I was on the same page. Well, first off, I mean, Kerr fucking blasted that. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised it didn't blow a hole through the net. It's funny too, because when they bring the captains out at the start of the game, you know, Kerr's like kind of bouncing around like a boxer and like, yep. it, it looks kind of intimidating, <laughs> but it also looks like she's freezing her fucking ass off. <laughs> she ran out to get, somebody gave her gloves and then she ran back out for the coin toss. <laughs> She just had that look about her too. Like, I'm I'm pissed. I'm going to take it out on this ball. And yet, I mean, excellent call on Canaroon, like just creating there. And I want to rewind a little bit uh, quickly as well. Also, shout out to definitely into the channel all-star. But the uh, in-house entertainment, you know, you mentioned the Lion Sleeps Tonight chant. How about a little Wiz Khalifa black and yellow at halftime <laughs> from the strong. in-house hacking DJ? <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. Very and it was strong. the unedited version. You know, no clean version here. Super entertaining first half, but I I was with you. I thought it was going to be pretty even all the way through. It sort of reminded me of like when you watch like maybe a big time heavyweight boxing match. Somebody lands a huge punch, you know, knocks the sweat off the other guy, but he's still there. Yep. We're still fighting. Doesn't seem like a whole lot's changed. You know, the action still looks pretty even. So a little bit of shades of that as well. Yeah, totally. BK Hacken, it even felt like. Chelsea scores and Hacken's fans were like, eh, okay. And they just kept singing and chanting. <laughs> they were like, you know, and, and that's great. I mean, there's 75 minutes left in the match. Like you shouldn't like act like it's doomsday because one of the elite clubs in the world scored. Chelsea's going to score. You just have to play like you are going to score too. That's how Hacken played. On Vigard, somewhat later on in the, a couple minutes later on in the first half, she hits like this really cool, like spinning pass to try to create a chance for Lucy. Just doesn't connect. There's just like some things happening in the final third where it's like, okay, Hacken is right there. They just need to, whatever sports cliche you want to say, keep chopping, keep fighting. I'm going to give another quick shout out to Aaron Cuthbert, who had one of my favorite moments in the match. I like these little side moments she had taken multiple shots to her ankle already in like the first like 25 minutes of this match Cuthbert's like leaving the field at one point and you can see her look at the trainer and the trainer's like clearly asking her like are you still good to go like you took a good shot to the ankle there and you see Cuthbert she's just doing this and she's just saying just wrap that shit up just wrap up my ankle LeBron James style just really tightening the shoe (laughs) yeah just fucking hardcore and then uh in the 29th minute Cuthbert takes another shot. They have to foul her because she's impossible to deal with. They foul her from behind. They get her in the same right ankle. And the camera pans to her just in time for her to stand up and be like, fuck! (laughs) Which is just like, (laughs) she's out here like, that is clearly painful in that cold. She's plowing right through it. And so before Cuthbert took that shot, which I got very excited to talk about the camera zooming in on her face as she screams in obscenity. Uh, But before that happens, what do we have? (laughs) Holy shit, Elma Juntala, she plays a perfectly weighted ball up the left-hand side to 18-year-old Monica Yusaba, who hits a pinpoint cross right on the forehead of Clarissa Larissi. And Musevich doesn't have a chance. 
all Larissa had to do is run. She didn't even have to really yeah. even make a header motion. The ball's just bouncing off her forehead, not to take away from her skill and anticipation to be there. It just literally, it just bounces off her forehead and goes into the goal. <laughs> Hacken's back in it. The fans, I use that term lightly saying uh, Hacken's back in it because the fans were never out of it. The team was never out of it. But now we're level again, 1-1, 26 minutes in. Let's fucking go. The only thing I can compare that to is remember when you were playing Madden as a kid against the computer and you're up four and the computer would just string together like a bullshit <laughs> sequence of like five plays in a row that just all are executed perfectly. Like that's kind of the only thing I can compare. It was just perfect ball, perfect ball, perfect run. Like you said, she barely has to move her head. She's just really like right, just ricochets off her head right into the goal. Just perfect placement. And I was just like, wow, that was something. Unbelievable team play by them. Never panicked. Just great play by three great players, really. Um, Chelsea continues to go to the well, which is a very good well to go to, which is continue to give the ball to Lauren James and allow her to distribute. Mean Charles, you already know what time it is. She's out here like LJ just has this like sixth sense of like, okay, now I have the ball. I'm going to let Charles run right by me. I'm going to let girl right and curl in in whatever direction like that play is calling for. Like those two are going to try to split defenders. They're going to try to give me space. I get to pick which situation I like more. They continue to lean on that. In the 39th minute, Canarud has a dangerous cross in the box. It doesn't connect, but the ball goes all the way across and it comes back to Canarud, who then plays the ball back into the box again. And Sam Kerr looks like she's pretty close to standing still. Now, she's not completely standing still. She's on a football pitch, but she is standing next to Falk and she has to leap to try to contest with the header. And I got to quote the great Dino De Cespedes and ask the question, can Sam Kerr possibly dunk a basketball? <laughs> I say yes. Even the announcer referenced her vertical, man. She's just got the hang time. She just keeps rising. It's really marvelous. I mean, just to see see her do that one specific skill yep. on top of all the other skills she has. It's pretty, right. pretty incredible. <laughs> Perfect number nine. Uh, and that's why she's one of the best number nines in the world. And from everything I've read, everything I seem to understand, one of the greatest number nines ever. I think already you could make a, a strong case for that. Mm -hmm. So we go into halftime. It's 1-1. One, one. Still, it continues back and forth. We're having chances on each side. Hacken doesn't look out of it. The fans are, are definitely not out of it. Hacken is moving down the field on the on the counter. In the 50th minute, the ball gets to Larissi, who patiently waits for Anvigard and makes a perfect pass to her. Anvigard takes the ball, left side of the box, hits a beautiful shot, has Musevich completely cooked, has her completely beaten. Where does it hit? Yeah. That goddamn crossbar again. In the 50th minute, Kafaji is able to come in and try to get a rebound, but uh, Musevich makes that save as well. It's tough enough when you have to beat Musevich as one of the best keepers in the world. Now you're contending with you just hitting the bar on all these very crucial opportunities. That's tough. And you have to be looking around and like, oh shit, okay, another close chance. We can do this. But then what happens? It seems like this happens so much in football. You have a chance. It's like you barely miss the opportunity. What do we have? Chelsea comes back down the field. Aaron Cuthbert, there's that name again. There's that wonderful midfield pivot player again. She is somehow left unattended inside the 18, and she just picks the perfect spot in the bottom right corner to beat Jennifer Falk, blasts it calmly into the lower right-hand corner. Chelsea's up 2-1. Chelsea's had 63% possession. It didn't necessarily feel that way, but with that Cuthbert goal to make it 2-1, I was thinking, does the next goal win this, whether it's Hacken or Chelsea? Where were you at, and, and what did you see on that Cuthbert goal? Well, I mean, I think we're winding back. The Hacken chance, it was mm -hmm. pretty cool just to see them being like, we're playing for three points. Yep. We're not fucking around out here like we want this. But yeah, I mean, great call on the fact that so often we see a close call become a backbreaking goal the other way. Yeah. Aaron Cuthbert, we've mentioned Queen of the North. <laughs> Damn right. This was her match. She just left a massive impression. Yeah. And I thought the announcer gave great context. Like Dino and I have said many times, like we're relatively new to this. Like we're, you know, it's our first time really following like teams in the WSL and things like that. The announcer educated us that... Cuthbert has made more than 200 appearances for Chelsea Football Club. She's 25 years old. Ridiculous. She has a long way to progress. And 
she is very clearly in her prime right now, and she looks and she looks every bit of it. Another moment in the 60th minute, Lauren James just doing her James Harden stuff, just doing your Aryan Robin stuff, just completely confusing defenders with her dribbling, ripping a shot. Falk has to make another jumping save in the 60th minute. Chelsea continues to put the pressure on. Uh, Ashley Lawrence plays a long pass into Kerr, who just has a little bit of a touch to leave it for Aaron Cuthbert, who drives the ball into the box. We've talked about her physicality. We've talked about her defensive smarts, her toughness. Cuthbert gets the ball off the little touch pass from Kerr. She gets Philippe Kermark to leave her feet, to slide as she kind of hits with the hezzy, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to pull up and shoot here at the 18. Gets Kermark off her feet, takes two more dribbles, and then just rips a shot. If you're Falk, you would like to stop that because you get a hand on it and it's relatively close to your body. You would hope to have enough strength to do it. I don't know if that's even still a fair ask of Falk because Cuthbert absolutely hammers it. The ball trickles in off of Falk's hand. It looks like a worse goal for the keeper than I think it is. You mentioned Cuthbert's strength. We got 3-1 Chelsea in the 65th minute. Even at this point, I wasn't counting Hacken out. For but sure. But just to kind of like defend Falk, she faced 22 shots, nine yeah. on target, six saves against a Chelsea side that's loaded. I mean, stuff's coming from everywhere. Oh, Kerr, yeah. Canarud, Cuthbert in this match. Lauren James is kind of <laughs> keeping you <laughs> on your toes, you know, literally. Yeah. Um, hard to really fault her in this one. Chelsea just, they had their foot all the way down on the gas. And they're like, all right, Hack, and you want to like really kind of give us everything? We're going to give you everything right back. And um, I think we just saw kind of like the more talented side basically earn more chances, better chances, and kind of come away with all three points. Yeah, totally right. Before the match wraps, Hacken stayed in it for the rest of the match, those final 25 minutes there. I would be remiss if I did not mention Anvigard, who played really excellently throughout the match, I thought. She plays a perfect ball from about 25 yards out to the opposite side of the field six-yard box. Molly Johansson hits a perfectly executed looping header. It beats Musevich. Look at that. We're at 3-2. Now, at that point, we're already at 90 plus three, so the match is pretty much over. But who comes in to ruin everybody's fun? The line judge with an egregiously awful offside call. Wasn't even close. Have no idea what the line judge was looking at. I will say I stand by. I don't like VAR. I'm fine with VAR not being in these matches. (laughs) I had a split second of like, "Mm, maybe VAR could have corrected that. But also for all the trouble that VAR is worth, I still don't think I want it. Super unlucky, unfortunate for Johansson, who got a nasty cut under her eye for her trouble. So not only does she get cut on her face, delivering that brilliant looping header, it doesn't even count. So overall, goal that's ruled off uh, aside, Hacken doesn't have anything to be really discouraged about here. That was a tough match. They had their chances. Yeah. They played counterattacking football well. They held the ball well when they needed to. They played good defense when they needed to. You already know what time it is with their goalkeeping. If you're hacking, you're sitting here saying, okay, still like my chances against anybody in this group. Yeah, I mean, they're still one point ahead of Paris FC. Yep. I'm 100% with you. Absolute tragedy, but I'm still fine with Novar. Yep. To keep yep. it moving. <laughs> yep. I, I'm it's with okay. You. Nobody got hurt. The outcome of the match completely unaffected. We keep it moving. I would only say nobody got hurt. Molly Johansson and her cut face may slightly disagree. But that wouldn't have been changed by VAR. (laughs) Fair. Excellent. Excellent correction. We care about journalism here. Uh, The commentator could not help herself from announcing the freaking Real Madrid Paris FC score. Had to do it. I I apologize. I couldn't grab the announcer's name, but it's okay because I'm going to roast her. We all have the internet. If we want the score, we can get it. You don't have to give us the score. (laughs) We're streaming this on fucking YouTube on The Zone. So if we've gotten to that level of technological prowess, I feel like we can figure out the score of the game if we want it. Just let us fucking enjoy these games. Some of us are watching them back to back. We want to watch all that. We want to keep maximum drama. I actually had to pause this hack and match. And then I had to kind of keep switching back and forth and try to make sure that I can maintain maximum drama. But yeah, commentator for this one. Give us a break. Great take. I love this. I mean, this is typical Americanism, but me and you two sickos over here watching as much football as we possibly can are like, hey, no no spoilers announcer. Come on, man. Don't like you have to honor the no spoilers code. So I'm I'm Seriously. with you on that. Or at least give like a heads up. Be like, okay, you know, like, yeah, like, like, like give us a little tell us that you're gonna announce the score, give me a chance to mute the, the screen and we keep it moving. I love it. 